Welcome back to live streaming of Sabbath services. Let's see what's happening in the world because there are a lot of things happening in the world. Now, we look at everything that's going on and we wonder, how can it get any worse? I mean, you look at the news and you get depressed. Look at Minnesota and all the things they're doing. And it looks like that that policeman will be given a, what do they say, a mistrial? Because the prosecution held back defense information that would exonerate the policeman. You ever heard of that before? Oh, those wonderful liberals. They're such honest, nice people. No, they're liars and cheats. Now look at Minnesota. It has been liberal, 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 and the only state in the Union that in 1984 did not vote for Ronald Reagan. Ultra-liberal. Now, what do those ultra-liberal policies amount to? Now, what happens when you get all the ultra-liberals in? In government and religion. Government gets away with taxation and corrupt practices. Religion gets away from obedi obedience to the word of God, okay? Even in the things that they had known. But you, you go back and check Protestantism, and you find out that they had everything, they were doing everything pretty well right before the turn of the 20th century. Now, in the back of the Bible, we have Rome's challenge to the Protestants where Cardinal Gibbon challenged the Protestants to prove that Sunday was authorized by Jesus Christ. And he says, you can't do it. Everywhere it's the Sabbath. Now, this was in reaction to the Protestants who brought a suit at the World's Fair in 1893 to have the fair closed down on Sunday because that was the Lord's Day. So the Seventh-day Adventist came counter to the suit and showed in court. Showed in court that the Sabbath was the only day that the New Testament taught. So, they didn't shut it down either Saturday or Sunday. And so, Rome's Challenge to the Protestant was published on four, get this, Sabbaths in a row in July 1893. Okay. Now, why do I mention this? Okay. Simple. If you get a warning from whatever source, whether it be the Bible or anything else, that is a true warning and you reject it, that's what the Protestants did. And that began the slide down, 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 down of the Protestants. A little bit, 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 every decade. Because they answered back and said, yes. The Bible only teaches the Sabbath. Okay. So what happens? When you break one law, you break them all. And when you have, as it is today, think of this as the culmination of that process of religious leaders and political leaders 
becoming so liberal that they became lawless. Would you not say that in Minnesota it's lawless? Okay. Yes, indeed. And you wonder, well, how bad can it get? Okay. Let's come to Mark 13 and verse 19. Because a lot of people are going to say, well, the end is near, the end is near. Look at all this stuff going on. Not yet. Because we're going to see other things of evil are going to come along that are going to be even worse. Okay? Verse 19. For in those days there shall be great tribulation. Now notice how severe such as has not been the like from the beginning of the creation of God that God created until that time, nor shall be again, ever be again. Okay. Now notice it's going to be so bad, verse 20, that unless the Lord had limited the days, no flesh, that means any life in the flesh would be saved. But, for the elect sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has limited the days. Okay? Now, come over here to Matthew 24. The reason we're coming to Matthew 24 is because I've been reading the Greek for the interlinear, doing proofreading, and that's a very tedious job. But as I was reading it, I just got done watching the news. <laughs> and in reading it, it was just like I was watching the news. So the disciples wanted to know, when's the completion of the age? He told them. When they said, look at all these beautiful buildings. Now just imagine. They're on the Mount of Olives. They're looking down toward the temple. Here's the, it's all covered with, with stone going from the floor of the Kidron Valley right up to the, uh, where the floor of the temple area was. Then you have the temple. You have the wall. You have everything there. Beautiful, w wonderful. And he said, look at these buildings. Now I want you to know there's a lesson that we can learn from this. It doesn't matter how good something may look or be. If it's not of God, or if God determines to destroy it, nobody's going to save it. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how bad is it going to get where God says, no more? Well, we don't know. Because in the world, we're going to see it describes it perfectly. So Jesus said to them, verse 2, Matthew 24, do you not see all these things? And it's the temple of God. The temple of God. Was there any more important building on the face of the earth? No. Okay. Truly I say to you that there shall not be left here even a stone upon a stone that shall not be thrown down. Now if you don't have our DVD, where's, where should the location of the third temple be, you ask for it because we can't put it online. We have to send you the DVD. And he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples came to him alone, saying, Tell us. Isn't that what we want to know? What's it going to be? How bad is it going to be? Okay. 
Now, I don't think those who live in Minneapolis think it can get very much worse, but it can. Okay. Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the completion of the age? Then Jesus answered and said to him, Be on guard or watch out. First thing, we've got to guard the faith. We've got to guard our relationship with God. We've got to guard the word of God. All of it. See, Be on guard so that no one deceives you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and they shall deceive many. Okay, now then. On top of what I got last week about the thinker and thought and the unfinished business of Herman Hay, this week I got another paper from Steve Collins who wrote the book The Lost Ten Tribes Found, which was really a good book. But here is an example, here is an example of how over time, unless you guard what you know is true, and unless you keep building toward the kingdom of God, you can slip away. Now, he wrote a paper on the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And he said this, that all of them describe Christianity of the world because they all profess that Jesus died for their sins. So for him... That means the Catholics are just fine, Protestants are just fine, the Mormons are just fine, Seventh-day Adventists are just fine. Next, who else becomes fine? All the other religions of the world. See? All right? Let's look at some things here concerning that. Let's see what Jesus said. Okay, let's come to Luke, Luke 6. He said nothing about keeping the commandments of God. He said nothing about idolatry that the Catholics have and that the Protestants have. Okay. So this is why everything must be tested by the word of God. Here's what Jesus said. Verse 46, Luke 6. Okay. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, or Jesus, Jesus? And do not practice what I say. Now, what does that include? Every word that's recorded, right? And he said these things over and over again when he was on earth. Practice. That means doing. Now, we read in the first part of the message today, obey my voice. Okay? Now, verse 47. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and practices them. That means live by them. What was the main thing he said in Mark 2 and verse 27. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now, if he's Lord and you call him Lord, Lord, and he did say that, but you don't keep the Sabbath, how can you be part of the church of God? Just because you may be a Protestant or a Catholic or an independent and you believe that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Is that enough? No? 
That can't be enough. Comes to me and here's my words and is practicing them. I will show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. That rock was Christ. And the flood came. That means trouble. Okay. And the torrent beat against the house, but could not shake it because it was founded on a rock. But the one who has heard my words and has not practiced them is like a man who built a house upon the, upon the ground at, without foundation, and when the torrent beat against it, it fell at once, and the fall of that house was great, the ruin, rather, was great. Okay? Now then, we find that he also brings this out in other places, this very same thing. Okay? Now, let's come to John 3.16, the verse that they all... Now, you need to understand this, the way it's translated here in the faithful version. And for all of you who do not have the faithful version, let me explain one of the reasons we did it was to bring the truth of the Word of God without all of the errors of the King James Version of the Bible and others, okay? Because the King James Version is what mixed up so many people concerning the, the truth of Paul's writings. And they didn't understand them, okay? Well, same way here with John 3.16. Let's read it. For God so loved the world, see? All the world's Christianity, God loves. What he says. That he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him. Now mark this word, believe. That is a preposition. Now what does a preposition mean in the Greek? And some will say, well, why didn't you translate it that way? Because it's a little awkward with too many INGs. So we use the universal. Believes. Participle means believing on a continuous basis. See? So that everyone who is believing him on a continuous basis may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Now look at the two places that it says may. Okay? That's special in the Greek. King James translates it as should. And may is different. May shows there are conditions. See? And it's called in the Greek subjunctive. So what are the conditions? See? So when you read a verse, you have other things to go to to find out the whole meaning of it. What are the other things that, that have to happen? Okay, Let's look at one here. Luke 13. Now at that time, there were present some who were telling him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. Okay, now that's kind of a gory thing, isn't it? Jesus answered and said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? Think about it. We look out and see all the destruction coming on and people dying, and some of them accidentally. Okay. You think he, he or she was a greater sinner because it happened? Jesus said, verse 13, No, I tell you, if you do not repent, that's 
the major condition, right? Repent and be baptized. That's another condition, right? Okay. So if you believe on him, that's what you will do. Then he says, I tell you no, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Or of the 18 on whom the tower of Shiloh fell and killed them. Do you think or suppose that these were more debtors above all men who dwell in Jerusalem? He says, no, I tell you, but if you do not repent, you shall all likewise perish. Okay? So that's quite a thing. There are conditions. You can't come along and say, oh, I've got a new doctrine, I'll write it down because I know how to write, and I'll send it out because I have a website, and a lot of people will believe it because I believe it. And say that all those in the world, because they profess Jesus, compose part of the church of God. Okay? What did Jesus say of us? What was the command that we are to do? So here's another one. Okay? Let's come back to Revelation 18. Here's another one concerning the very things that are taking place today and what God expects people to do. And this will be the only way that there may be some mitigation of some of the evil that is transpiring. Because, see, evil goes from place to place to place. Isn't that what happened? Where did all of this start? In Seattle, Washington. Right? Then in Portland. Then in Los Angeles. Then in Minnesota. Minneapolis. Then in Chicago. Then in New York. Now, politically speaking, they all represent what? They all represent progressive Democrats, which means they are responsible and the people who follow them for having such ideologies that there is no law. What is God going to do with lawbreakers who won't repent? He's going to execute them. Why do we have so much law breaking within us? Because we're letting all of the criminals out of jail. Because we're broad-minded people and we want to help them. So they come out like this one man who got out and he was in jail for killing his mother. Let him out and showed it on, on television. He beat up a 68-year-old woman and punched her and kicked her and walked off. And there were people standing in a, a doorway in a building, and there was one of these cameras that they have posted in various places. It was in, in that apartment building, and they were watching. And when he got done beating her up, he walked away, and they shut the door. They didn't go out to help her. Now, how are you going to deal with situations like this? Let's put it another way. Unless they bring in real strict law enforcement, and they have laws that get rid of the evil ones, this is only going to multiply. What did Jesus say in Matthew 24 about lawlessness? It's going to multiply. Now, what does multiply mean? It's not just add-on, add-on. It's add-on, 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 all the way around. Okay, 
multiply. Revelation 18. Now this is just before the destruction of the whole system called in Revelation Babylon the Great. Verse 1. And after these things I saw an angel descending from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. Now why does God do things this way? In hopes that when people see that, they'll fall on their knees or fall on their face and repent. That's what God wants. And he cried out with a, with a mighty loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of demons and a portion of every unclean spirit and prison of every unclean and hated bird. That's how bad it's going to get worldwide. Okay? Because all nations, is that not worldwide? Is all nations worldwide? Yes. Have drunk of the wine of the fury of her fornication. Now, there may be some people out there who are relatively good people. But remember this. When Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, two other neighboring cities were destroyed because they were enablers. So think about that. All nation had drunk of the wine of the fury of her fornication. All the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. All of the kings, all of the leaders, okay? And the merchants, think about the merchants, who are they? Well, think about the merchants of woke. You know what woke is? Change the whole society. Eliminate the history of America. Right? They didn't like the change of the election law. So what happened? Major League Baseball moved it to another location. Coca-Cola and, and Delta Airlines followed. And how many other leaders of corporations? See? Now they can do it because they're going to make the money. Even if people stop buying their products or flying their planes for a while, doesn't matter to them. So you have the business leaders involved in it, right? And the merchants of the earth have become rich. How about all of the tech companies? Anyone who believes in law and order won't be able to be on there. Now, what they're also trying to do is this. They're trying to develop artificial intelligence. And what they will do is have artificial intelligence censor everything that goes on, all the digital communication devices, period. And what will they do? Whoop! Censor it all. See? That means what you are watching out there on live streaming. One day, it will be gone. Question, what are you going to do? See? That's why you have to have your own personal Bible, your own personal prayer and study every day. See? Because remember what Jesus told the Laodiceans. We'll get there in a minute. Okay? I become rich through the power of her luxury. And I heard another loud voice from heaven saying, here's a call to repentance. See, you cannot have John 3.16 without repentance and baptism and obeying the word of God. But they misuse it so that they can daub and people's conscience feel, oh, I'm relieved. And then they're told, when they say, well, what should I do? There's nothing for you to do. Just believe. Okay. 
So they go right back. Heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Okay. Now these are all the children of Israel and any in the churches of God. Come out of her, my people, so that you do not take part in her sins and that you do not receive her plagues. Well, how do they get into a situation that they're subject to that? Exactly by believing what Stephen Collins has written. Everybody who professes the name of Jesus is going to be saved. See? That's how it happens. Notice, you take partake of her sins that you do not receive of her plagues, for her sins have reached as far as seven, and God has remembered her iniquities, rendered to her as she is rendered to you, and give double even according as to her works in the cup that she has mixed, give her back double. Okay. So it's coming. It's coming. But how far is it going to go? Okay. Let me add just something in here to let you know there may be far more time than we may be thinking. Now, this is from a book that is mentioned in the Bible, the book of Jasher, which is a historical book, much like the books of Maccabees. Okay? So how bad is it going to get? How far will it go? Can you think in the book of Genesis a clue as to how far it will go? Think of a verse. Genesis 11.3, and now whatever they imagine to do will not be restrained from them. Okay, right? Here it is. Days of Noah, hybrid monkey-human embryos created in the lab for the first time. Pandora's box has been opened. Now let me read you the quote. Why are they doing this? Okay. Now, every evil is done on a good-sounding basis. If you do it to help people, that's good. Especially if you do it to help sick people. Or in this case, people who have heart transplants, kidney transplants, lung transplants, all of that. And there are the demand for transplants is so high that they're trying to figure a way how they can grow human organs in monkeys. Now, they already do it with pigs. They're able to splice the gene, to put the gene in there, so that the pig heart valve will be human. Then they kill the pig, and they put it in the person's heart. So here they explain why, why they are doing it in China and in La Jolla, California. These are the scientists. Now, the scientists are doing this for good. We want to help people. That's why we've killed 62 million in abortion, because we want to help people. See? The demand for transplants is that much higher than supply. So he goes on to describe how his team injected 25 IPS or induced plural potent stem cells from humans to a number of macaque 
monkey embryos. The details of the report stated that over 100 of the embryos remained whole, and or it, which enabled the scientists to study how the different types of cells interact. Our goal is not to generate any new organisms, any monster. Oh no, we wouldn't do that. Of course we wouldn't do that. Belltown stressed, and we're not doing anything like that. We're trying to understand how cells from different organisms communicate with one another. This knowledge will allow us to go back now and try to re engineer the pathways that are successful for allowing appropriate development of human cells in these other animals. Now, how far will they go? Remember, God said to confuse the language because now anything they imagine to do, they can do. Here it is, right here. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Okay. Now, here's a quote. You can check it online from Jasser, chapter 4, verse 18, quote. Talking about the days of Noah. And their judges and rulers. Who's leading the charge today? went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands, according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beast of the field, and the fowl of air, and taught the mixture of animals of one species with another, in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted its way on the earth. Okay? Now then, prove a point. Come back to Genesis 6. So just when we think it's really getting bad, and maybe we're close to the end, and maybe it's not going to get so bad, and hopefully we will all escape. And remember this. Don't pull a Hezekiah on God. Remember what happened with Hezekiah? God gave him 15 years extra length of time to live, right? Then he got all uplifted and he showed the ambassadors from Babylon all the wealth and booty and everything that he got from the Assyrian army when God destroyed them and showed it to them. So Isaiah came to him and said, who were these men? Oh, they're ambassadors from Babylon. What did you show them? Everything. So what did God say through Isaiah? It's all going to Babylon. But not in your day. So don't think just because it's not in your day, that it isn't going to happen. But what was Hezekiah's response? Oh, that's good. It won't be in my day. Verse 5 and go forward from there. Now remember, all of the evil was contemporary during Noah's day. And how bad did it get? Noah's family, but Noah only, one man, saved the whole human race because of God. Just one man. So don't think that you're not important to God. Every individual is. God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, is it today? And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
watch the television, watch your smartphones, watch all of this stuff online, sin, 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 a few good things here and there. But that's all it is. You know, little sidebar on creating these new organs in the monkeys. Why don't they teach people how to take care of themselves? And they won't need a heart transplant or kidney transplant. Now, why is there a great need today? Because too many people are on drugs destroying. Okay. Now notice what God says. And the Lord repented that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the crawling thing and the fowl of heaven, for I repent that I have made them. Okay. What are they trying to do with them today? Mix them with human genes. What were they doing then? We've got written down, mixing human genes with animal genes. Same thing. Verse 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How powerful is that? Well, we're here because of that, right? These are the generations of Noah. Now notice this carefully. Noah was a righteous man and perfect in his generation or genealogy. Why would it mention that? Because of what we read in a book of Jasher. And what's happening today? For Noah walked with God. And so that's what we need to do. So I want you to have more strength and courage and understanding of the things that are coming because we haven't seen anything yet. But if you're doing like Noah, God will be with you, he will help you, and he will strengthen you. So we'll close for today.